Well, hello, all my fluid art friends. It's Doris at DF Designs. Here is the much anticipated and waited for video of how to make a foam box to protect your painting because I've covered up parts of the label and the addresses, but this is what happens when you use these um, medium flat rate boxes or you use a box A or a box B that a painting fits in. They are notorious for doing this. So, I just recently sent a package to a, uh, somebody who either bought a painting or won a painting. Anyway, I sent a painting to somebody and I put it in a foam box. I'm going to show you how I make the foam boxes. All you need, okay, all you need is the foam board which is from um, Dollar Tree. You don't need the expensive stuff. This one's fine. Now, this is a painting that I'm going to make a box for. This painting is a 12 by 12, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 12 by 12, and it's a deep canvas. So, on a deep canvas, I always make the boxes two inches on the outside, uh, for the side. So, I'm going to show you let me move this because we don't need this at the moment. Okay, this is just a regular cutting board that I protect my work surface with, okay? Now, um, first, thing, first thing I always do is I always look for a bent up corner. If there is a bent up corner, that's where I'm going to start doing my markings. Which, this has got a bent up corner right here, so... I'm going to do it on the other side. The markings you're making are going to be on the outside because you're going to end up scoring on them. So that was a 12 by 12 gallery wrap canvas. I'm pretty sure it was a level three. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this two inches up the side. And I always do two different marks because that way I can make sure, I mean, you know, two marks at two inches so I can make sure my line is straight. Okay, you're just going to make a, make that. Now, because it is a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas, I'm going to make the inner dimension 13 by 13. But first, what I do is, is, I make my I make my um um two inch marks. Okay, I need to move this up just a little bit. And you know what? For the easy you all seeing it, I normally don't use a felt tip, but I think it will be easier for you to see see my lines. So let me see if I can get this a little bit over more sorry for the glare on my knife okay so I made two marks and marked off a line for for two inches and here is another two marks yes that you can see and now I'm going to use those two lines to draw a two inch line here okay now you can use a t-square I do have one of those but most people don't so I am showing you with a, a just a regular ruler okay that is two inches now what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna measure 13 inches from this line which will be the corresponding um, line over here and then I'm gonna do another mark just two inches past it this is a 15 inch ruler so that's where it comes out handy okay so at 13 and at 15 okay and then i'm going to mark mark this now you notice the first line didn't go up. This line didn't go all the way over because I wasn't sure how far it should go. So what I'm doing is is now 
I'm making the rest of the line because that's going to be your cut and your score line. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how to do this and keep it on camera. So I'm just going to have to do it this way. Okay. So now you want, since it's a 12 by 12, this is 13, so you want this to be 13 too. So I'm making, got it matched up to the line right here. One, one, one line goes at 13, one line goes at 15, which happens to be the end of my ruler. And then 13 and 15. Now I'm going to have to stand up to do this so I can keep it on camera. And all you want to do is match your ruler up. Wait a minute, that doesn't look straight. That does not look straight. Nope, that went too far. That's C. Now that looks straighter to me. Okay. And then I'm going to do the two inch line for the side because you're not going to believe it but this box will protect your painting and I know it sounds like a lot of work but how much work did you put into that painting that you made that you're shipping to somebody you know do you want the postal service to mess up okay uh, let's see I'm not sure how far to go, so I'm going to kind of make the line right there. See, it didn't go all the way up, but I don't like my lines going past where they need to go. So, that's why I just made it a little shorter. I can connect the, cor the corner of the lines. Okay, and now this one. Okay, now you have, let me, let me mark, mark this line so it's darker so you can see all the lines. Because this one was done with a regular pen. Okay, now the first thing I do is I cut out the whole piece from the rest of the canvas. This is where you need your cutting board. see how I can get it on camera because this piece is pretty big um, I forgot what size it is but it's pretty big and these are just a dollar a piece and I can usually I'm not sure if that's 13 inches right there or not but when you make your lid you might have to have another piece okay so this line doesn't have to be straight I'm just cutting it up to the line now I'm following my line and I'm cutting all the way through and of course this is longer than my cutting board so I'm cutting all the way through okay this let me see is this gonna be big enough mm, no and I'll tell you why that's not gonna be big enough um, after I um, make the bottom this is what I call the bottom of the box this is the main part of the box now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all the way through this line to get rid of that piece okay now comes the part that it's hard to explain you're gonna cut these corners out but you want to score this line so what I always do is, is I just score you're not pushing your blade through very much. I'll show you in a minute um, what you're trying to achieve. You're just scoring along that line, making a cut that's halfway through because you want it to do this. Oh boy. I may have to darken that. <laughs> okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna cut out these corner pieces and 
And now you're just going to go around and you're going to score along the whole line. And when you get to this part, you can then push all the way through to cut it out. And then you're going to cut out that corner. And see, it didn't matter that it was bent because it's garbage history. Although I do keep a lot of my corner pieces because I use them to make what I call little, um, oh, how do I explain it? Uh, when I when I make the video for the clock boxes, you'll see what I mean. Okay. Oh, didn't. Okay. Got to score this one. And I didn't score this one yet, so let's score this one. Now, normally I don't use the dark pen, but that's so you can see the lines. Okay, you don't need your cutting board right now at this point, so I put it off this side. Now, I use regular tape. Like, there it is. I And I have a tape gun because I do so much shipping. What I do is, is I pull off about, oh, four or five inches of tape, okay? And then... I put it over on the corner then you match up this is hard to do come on box stay put then I put it down that way so it's on both sides and then basically I tuck this in okay then I take another piece and I do the bottom of it which reinforces everything to stay put okay and you do that on all four corners you tape around the corner tuck it in and then I just use another piece of tape to reinforce it Now, if you ever cut too far through from your scoring when you're trying to only go halfway through to give it a bend, you can, on the outside, reinforce it with some more tape just so the little, see like right here, it's a barely a layer, it's barely a layer of uh, paper there. So what I will do is, I'll show you in a second. I'm putting the tape on the corner to reinforce it to make it stay put. Then, you can do this a number of ways. And usually what I do is, is I just do a tape around the corner like that. Flatten that one out and then fold this one over. And now I've got tape right there. And I got one more to tape. And then I'm going to show you real quick how I make a box. All you're doing is putting the tape on halfway um, or down the side. So you have another piece about the same size to fold in. And I'm going to reinforce the bottom of that corner real quick. So you go halfway across. It's hard to see the clear, but the edge of the tape is right there because you got all this hanging over. And then you fold this one down and you fold this one in. And then you've got your corners reinforced. Now, see, I'm going to use the box, but I really don't like the dark lines. Okay. Now, that piece was not big enough for this. And I'll tell you why it's not big enough. Because when you match it up to an edge, okay, 
see how it doesn't go all the way to the other edge and that's very important for the lid because that's protecting it from being crushed into the painting well, let me get a fresh piece of board okay you got your box oh you try to keep your sides as even as possible that's why I, I measure and cut them all two inches because you don't want one corner that much higher than the other one okay so what I do is is oh boy 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 okay I gotta stand up let me bring this over okay you want to match up one side well, two sides, really. You want to make sure that your that your side or the the edge of this is just on the edge of that. Okay. Now, usually, what I do is is when I get that matched up, let me see if I can find something to hold it down. I put a See, that's already moved. But the what's going to be your hinge, it's very important that it matches up exactly right. Doesn't matter if this side goes a little off, this cuz this side's went off too. What I do is is I make the two hinges real quick so it doesn't move okay now I can basically make the rest of the hinge by doing this just putting a piece of tape around this corner corner meaning this top and the side see that I didn't quite cut the two pieces of tape long enough to meet up in the middle so I'm gonna finish the hinge like that now what I do is is I turn it over okay <laughs> this is not easy because I have all this extra cardboard sticking out you can see where there's the hinge and this one is pretty much this one is pretty much um, where it's supposed to be you want you want the edge of this to be on top of this piece right here because it's going to protect it now what I always do is, is I just I just cut let me see if I can turn this around there we go out of the way I hold the box I take my knife oh, I gotta move it back some I take my knife and I kind of use the side of the knife as a guide for how for to get a, a little bit past And it's okay if you cut it a little crooked don't worry about that because you're going to trim it up after you get rid of the most most of the most of the excess that's over there <laughs> i got stuff see now it's a little bit past the edge but that is okay because now it's easier to get to the get to the side and trim it away let 
Okay, now your last step, and I always stand up my box this way to tape this part, is, now you, I don't know if you can, let me see, yeah, you can see it. There is a little crack right there, and you want that crack there because that's going to be part of the hinge. Now here's where I'm going to use my knife to hold it, and I'm not going to do long pieces, but I'm going to tape the hinge on the inside the reason I started doing this is because I was just scoring the line and making it um making it um, um f just fold over but people were bending it so far back Instead of holding it like this, they were bending it, and if it didn't have the hinge, it got messed up. Okay, now, if the painting was ready, was all varnished, I would put it in there with paper. I wrap parchment paper around my painting. But this one is almost, well, it is dry to the touch, okay? I just put it inside the box, and here's the reason why you want it to be one inch bigger. You might even want to make it bigger than that. I could have gotten away with 13 or 13 and a half or 14 inches. But you see how you got the room right there. If I had parchment paper on it, all the parchment paper would go to the back. But this one is not finished yet. So there you go. Now, now you can, um, if you need your side to push in a little bit like mine is needing to do, you can always use just regular masking tape. Just put, tape it down with regular masking tape. But as you can see, this part keeps this part from crushing. Now, I don't recommend you try doing this, but look. And you get it in one of those boxes. Uh, 12 by 12, I don't think there's a box big enough for it. Um, but you get it in one of, one of those boxes, you know, like a te uh, 10 by 10 or... Like, I, I've never measured this to see. Nope, 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 doesn't fit. Uh... Where's the dimensions? Um, 11 by 875 by 13 by 625. So you could fit a box that is 11 inches by 13 inches in here, the outer box, okay? Which means you'd end up having to do a 10 by 12 or a 10 by 10 on the box like that. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And tell me down in the comments if you have any questions. This has been protecting my paintings for years. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I can explain it in, in, in depth, I should say if you do have questions and all i can say is thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscription button right up here and go check out this tips and trick video and go check out this tips and trick video because i like to do if i have a tip for you i'm going to show it to you okay so all i can say is bye for now